Hi there. A few days ago, I posted a video called You Have to Keep Going or You Must Keep Going. And what it referred to is how many parents that I've seen over the years look at that honeymoon period at the beginning of every school year where things are going well and they think, hey, this is great. You know, there's no problems, there's no crisis, and then they take their eye off the ball and they miss those positive teaching moments where they can look at what's working and especially your child's role in what's working so that it can keep working instead of waiting until the honeymoon's over, things fall apart, now there's something that's in crisis pitch that we have to put the fire up. Okay? Well, one of my clients asked me to expand on this. Her question was, you know, can you give us a sense of what the conversation would look like when you spot a new habit when you spot that your child's doing something well and you want to reinforce that so that it becomes more of the uh, your child's habit, more of your child's awareness. Uh, Nancy, you might have missed part one, but as soon as I'm done with this, I will put a link to part one after this in the comments so you can check it out, okay? So in response to my client's question of, you know, how do we catch them doing something well. How do we bring it into their awareness in a way that they can use it? Well, frankly, I have some answers for you, fortunately. So let's say your child comes home. They completed a homework assignment. They did really well on it. They took a quiz. They got a great grade. They took a test and did better than they expected. One of the first questions you can ask is this. Wow, is that what you wanted? You know, Is that the, the grade that you were looking for? Maybe it was like Oh, it was even better. I was hoping just to pass. You know, I was hoping just to get a C, but I got a B. You know, I was really happy with that. Then you can follow up by saying, man, I imagine you feel pretty proud of yourself right now. Am I right? So you put it out there and say, I imagine you feel pretty proud of yourself. Am I right? When you ask that question, you are encouraging them to introspect and look at their emotions and see, is this, do I feel proud? Is kids that are very reactive and feel you know, very incompetent because of their challenges, pride might not be an emotion they feel that often. Okay? So you want to give them an opportunity to check in and see, is this what I'm feeling right now different? Is this new? Does proud feel like the right language to put upon it? So give your child that moment. You know, I imagine you feel pretty proud of yourself. Am I right? So if the child then responds and says, yeah, I, I feel real proud of myself. I think I, you know, I, I did a great job here. Then you can ask, well, just out of curiosity, what exactly did you do to make this happen, to, to get this grade? You know, what steps did you take? And your child might have that immediate response, well, I don't know because they didn't take any time to think about it. So you can encourage your child to reflect and say, oh, just, just take a minute, you know, think about what you did. Because I bet you that you came up with some really good strategies or one really good strategy to make this happen. And if they come back later and say, well, you know, I'm really not sure what I did. Possibly they weren't thinking about it. They were just in the moment. So ask them this then. Well, do you remember the first thing you did? Is there one thing that you did differently from last time that you think helped result in this wonderful grade or this wonderful result that you got? Because what you want to tune them into is not only the fact that they are experiencing pride, maybe for the first time in a long time, but that they took specific actions to get that result. Because far too often our kids that feel inconsistent with their results begin to attribute their success to luck. Well, I guess I just got lucky. Oh, the teacher just didn't happen to make some easy questions. And they totally ignore their own capacity in creating that success. So these questions are guised to help them begin to think about, what did I do? What decisions did I make? And let's say your child was able to answer the question. And he or she said something like, well, I made sure that I studied really hard the night before because I was stuck on a few things and I wanted to be more sure of myself. So then you respond, 
oh, that was a great decision to put in that study time. Again, the wording here is key because you're emphasizing to the, your child that he or she can make good decisions. Because I've been approached by parents who have kids that are so afraid to make decisions that they won't do it. They want to defer to the adults. No, mom, you just tell me what to do. I don't know. I don't know. So we need to help our kids realize you make decisions that create positive results. If you are capable of making the decision once, you can make a good decision again. So let's keep that conversation going. After you say, that was a great decision to put in that study time, then you can follow up with, I bet you felt more confident being prepared for the test, didn't you? Child reflects again. Yeah, I did feel more confident. See how this follows the initial questioning when you helped your child tap into the fact that he or she felt a little proud because of the result? Now you're helping your child tune in to a decision that they made in order to feel more confident in their ability. Because confidence in your ability going into a test enhances the likelihood you're going to do well as opposed to walking into the test feeling afraid. Oh my goodness, I hope I don't screw up. You know, I hope that I don't do bad on this test. That's the kind of stuff that happens when your child is insecure going into a test. But if they've identified a strategy, a step that they took, extra studying, asking the teacher for help, and they made that good decision that resulted in increased confidence, you want to help them become aware that this is a decision they made that led to a feeling that they can use. They can use pride, they can use confidence, and they can leverage that for better results. Okay? Now, another important thing besides proud and confidence. When you say that your child made a decision, they took an action, you can say, way to own that, Johnny. You know, you really took responsibility for making that happen, didn't you? What are we queuing them into now? We're showing them that responsibility, owning something, has power. Because far too often when our kiddos get in trouble, what is one of the things that parents say or teachers say? You need to take responsibility, young man. You need to take responsibility for your actions. So our kids learn that responsibility means taking blame, accepting punishment. Then who in the heck would want to take responsibility ever again if that's what it means? So we want to remind our kids that there is another side to that responsibility coin. And that is owning the information, owning the actions that get you a specific result on the positive end. Not just doing the stuff that will get you sent to the principal's office or get you criticized again. We want to really help our kids understand that they can take responsibility for creating results they actually want. So let's say you're able to get from your child, going back to the beginning a little bit, you're able to get from your child what strategy they use to take the test. You know, maybe it's, well, you know, I, I started with the answers that I really knew first. Then the ones I wasn't sure of, I went back and checked them again to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Wow, that's a great strategy, Julie. Did you happen to write that down? Did you happen to write those steps down? Well, no, I just kind of thought of it at the moment. Oh, man. Well, if you want, maybe you can write them down so that you can review them the next time you have a test so that you can remember what those steps were. Yeah, I bet you they might come in handy next time. Because I can tell you from my personal experience, I learn strategies that work really well, and if I don't write them down because of my working memory, I will forget them. Even worse, when the test comes... If there are multiple steps to it, because of my working memory, I have trouble remembering more than three steps. So if your child writes down the steps that they use, you know, start with the easy questions. Do the hard ones last. Review your, you know, the harder ones to make sure there are no mistakes. That can be an accommodation to have that list handy, because that list doesn't contain any formulas, it doesn't contain any of the answers or the stuff you were supposed to memorize. All it does is provide a process so that your child doesn't forget to do certain things. Because I know one young man 
who he talked about that similar process, and he forgot to go back and check his answers, he did really bad. On the test he did remember to check his answers, he did much better. But it was one of those moments where if it happened to find room in your working memory, you had access to that information. If it didn't find room, you're up the creek without a paddle. So you're better off having it in written form, having it written into the IEP that this, my child needs this written strategy to remember to cover all bases. So hopefully this has been helpful. When you go back and listen to this a couple times and listen to the questions that I'm suggesting you ask your child in those moments where they created positive results, to cue them into not only the decisions, the responsibilities they took, but the feelings that were associated with those decisions. Because a lot of our kids, maybe they'll be successful to get the parents or the teachers off their back. But what you want to build up in them is that internal sense of accomplishment, that internal sense of reward. That they're not doing it simply because, hey, you know, I'll buy you another iTunes download if you get a good grade on the test. If they enjoy feeling pride or confidence or that sense of being responsibility in a positive way, the more you reinforce that, the more that can become the carrot. They succeed because of how they want to feel about it. Now you're no longer having to dangle prizes in front of them in order to get them to succeed. So think about all this again. Hopefully this has been helpful. If so, please comment below and let me know what you think. And if you need to go a little bit deeper, because I know I would get this pretty general so that more people can benefit from it. And everybody's situation is a little different. We might have to tweak these questions depending on your child or depending on yourself. So if you want to make this a little bit more customized, go ahead and send me a personal message and we'll work through it. And if there are others that you think can benefit from this, feel free to share it. Till next time, this is Brian King. We'll talk again soon.